Hi, Dr. William Davis here, author of the Wheat Belly series of books and most recently, Super Gut. Are you or someone close to you having a difficult time with increasing levels of frustration, anger, angry outbursts, even an impulse towards violence? Well, I think this is getting worse. And there's, while there's lots of reasons for these things, right? There's financial stress, there's marital stress, uh, stress with teenage children. Look, there's all kinds of reasons to be angry or frustrated, work stress, right? But I think, and those are difficult issues to remedy, right? But I think there's three things you ought to know about in ways that anger, frustration, hatred, even violence can come from microbiome issues. One way is the loss of oxytocin, the hormone oxytocin. So we know that the microbe Lactobacillus roteri that takes up residence in the entire GI tract from mouth to anus, which is very uncommon, most microbes can't do that, but lactobacillus roteri does. And when it does that, it sends a signal through the vagus nerve up, retrograde, to the brain, to the hypothalamus, and tells it to release the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin, the hormone of love and empathy and generosity and the acceptance of other people's opinions. Now, problems. If you lose lactobacillus roteri, as most modern people have, because it's very susceptible to common antibiotics, so many people have lost roteri and thereby the capacity to boost oxytocin to higher levels. But there's another aspect to that problem. That is, there's another hormone very closely related to oxytocin called vasopressin, sometimes also called ADH or antidiuretic hormone. Those two, oxytocin and vasopressin, uh, look the same except for two amino acids. In other words, both are nine amino acids long. They're small peptides and different by only two amino acids. And because they look a lot alike, they can kind of bind to each other's receptors to some degree. So oxytocin can bind to the oxytocin receptor, obviously, but it also can bind when it's present at high levels to the vasopressin receptor, and likewise vasopressin to the oxytocin receptor. There's an odd phenomenon as we age. So as we age, oxytocin levels drop, even more so if you lose roteri, while vasopressin levels rise. It's not quite clear why that is. That may be part of the reason why older people are prone to edema, by the way. So drop in oxytocin from aging and or from loss of roteri and then the dominance of vasopressin. Well, that's important because vasopressin is responsible not for empathy and love like oxytocin, but for aggression, for distancing yourself from other people, from, uh, to isolation. So it's kind of the opposite in many ways of oxytocin, despite looking a lot alike. So that, that effect alone is responsible probably for some people's anger. Another phenomenon is SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Those of you following my conversations know that there is an enormous epidemic go on. Half the U.S. population has this problem. Uh, we say SIBO, S-I-B-O. I say that because there have been many studies asking this question. In condition blank, what proportion of people test positive for SIBO? Typically using a method called hydrogen gas because bacteria produce hydrogen gas, but we cannot. And if we ask this question, in people with irritable bowel syndrome, for instance, 60 to 70 million people in the U.S. have irritable bowel syndrome, what proportion tests positive? Well, conservatively, 31%, much higher in some other sites, but let's, let's be conservative, 31%. Well, that's 18 to 20 million people right there. How about in obesity, what proportion tests positive for SIBO? Well, of the 105, 110 million Americans with obesity, 50% test positive. Well, that's another 50, 55 million people right there. Likewise, fibromyalgia, type 2 diabetes and prediabetes, atrial fibrillation, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, autoimmune conditions, uh, food intolerances, on and on and on. You can see we readily add up to about 150 plus million people, or one in two Americans have this problem. Well, one of the effects of SIBO, that is fecal microbes that have overproliferated from the colon and then ascended to dominate and occupy the 24 feet of small intestine, is that those fecal microbes that take up residence in the small intestine don't belong there, and the small intestine is not well equipped to deal with this. So the small intestinal wall becomes inflamed, and when those microbes, trillions of them, die, they release some of their toxic compounds, such as endotoxin. And that is able to cross the barrier, the small intestinal barrier, and enter the bloodstream.
That's called endotoxemia. So I, I know that's a mouthful. So SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, leads to endotoxemia. And endotoxemia in the bloodstream not only is a major contributor to weight gain, abdominal fat expansion, type 2 diabetes, depression, anxiety, autoimmune disease, rosacea, psoriasis, restless leg syndrome, all those conditions. It also is a trigger for irritability, frustration, and anger. So we have yet another common contributor to these social and emotional phenomena. Another one, not that well worked out in the science, is a cousin of SIBO, which is small intestinal fungal overgrowth, SIFO, S-I-F-O, or just overproliferation of fungal species like candida in your colon. We don't know why. No one knows why fungal overgrowth can, can cause sometimes an extreme form of anger. But if you've ever had SIFO or saw some with SIFO by stool testing or endoscopic uh, aspirate to look at the um, duodenal or jejunal contents for fungi, you'll see extreme anger and frustration in these people. That goes away when you remedy the SIFO or the fungal overgrowth in the colon. So these are all... All, all of these phenomena, I believe, are readily correctable via microbiome strategies. So if, if you want to find out how to do these kinds of things, follow my conversations here in my Defiant Health podcast, in my YouTube channel, or of course my Super Gut book, where I lay out just how to correct these things. If you say, this is scary, too complicated, I can't do it. I also have a WilliamDavisMD.com website where we have what I call an inner circle where we it's a membership site but you interact with me and all our members and we support you in doing these kinds of things and that you can find so williamdavismd.com or drdavisinfinitehealth.com inner circle